Hello, welcome to Arvind Singh Academy. We are discussing mathematical tool and this is lecture number 7. I hope you have already watched part 1 to part 6 before watching this part 7. And in this lecture we are going to discuss about vectors. Uh, we have already two lectures on this uh, vector. So this is the third lecture. In this lecture we will discuss about the subtraction of vectors, resolution of vectors and uh, also if uh, possible some questions will be also discussed. So in this lecture uh, we are going to discuss today about um, subtraction of vectors. Is there any subtraction? So let us discuss subtraction of subtraction of vectors. Subtraction of vectors. Subtraction of vectors. So basically, uh, subtraction is not like that. That if A and B say if A and B are any two vectors, are any two vectors, then uh, subtraction of A and B, subtraction of vector A and B, vector A and B is defined as is defined as a minus b that is in fact a vector plus minus of vector b right now so whenever you have to go for subtraction basically this is an addition and we have to uh, apply addition of vector a with negative of vector b suppose if there is a vector like a vector say this vector is like this is a vector a right and uh, we have to find vector b is there a and b and we have to find subtraction of vector b so there is vector b right so this is a vector b so basically uh, we have to calculate this is vector a and this is vector b so negative of vector b uh, to be drawn here and that will be basically that is equal in magnitude but a positive sign. So b vector this is minus b. If this one is b, then this vector will be minus of b. So this is minus of b. Right now this vector is considered as minus of vector b. If this is b, this vector is minus b. Now addition of these two. So because it is a head tail system, so third. Uh, vector in a positive tail to tail and head to head will give the uh, resultant of these two. So this one will give the resultant of these two that is A minus B. So A minus B is this and if you want to draw a line that is joining these two that will be A plus B. So this one is A plus B right this one is a plus b and uh, this one is a minus b in fact so, so this is the way in which uh, a minus b is defined and uh, resultant of a minus b can be obtained as uh, same way you know that is the formula in which you can do it and uh, a resultant of a plus b and a minus b will be almost same magnitude wise same so a plus b and a minus b will be same. Magnitude of a plus b and a minus b will be same. Right now, if they are at some angle. Now we had learned that a plus b resultant is said a plus b vector r, and we have learned this earlier um, in previous lecture that r is defined as what is r? Magnitude of r can be calculated as under root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta where theta is an angle between a and b so this is vector a and this is vector b theta is an angle between a and b so this one is 180 minus theta right now so we have calculated already this if uh, now some special cases can be considered by using this and also that uh, 
a resultant makes an angle with this is i pi is equal to what that is a b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta this is tan inverse so directions is given by tan inverse phi is an angle and that is described as tan inverse this now there is a case H we can uh, conclude in addition a plus b is this a special cases are there which we can be discuss here a special case what is that first when theta is equal to zero theta is equal to zero it means vectors are parallel that is vectors are like parallel vectors. like parallel like parallel in this way cos 0 is equal to what cos 0 degree is equal to 1 and by using this in formula you will get it r is equal to under root a square plus b square plus 2 ab because cos 0 is 1 and that will be under root of a plus b whole square which will come up as a plus b so magnitude of vector a magnitude of vector b Right. So this magnitude is obtained by actually um, sum of magnitudes of two vectors and this is what already had been uh, told to you that uh, when two like parallel vectors are there then their resultant is obtained by adding their magnitudes and direction will be same as the bigger vector. So this is what uh, here verified with this uh, special case. Right now, now um, if case 2 let us consider case 2. Case 2 is there and what is that? When theta is equal to 90 degree. Theta is equal to 90 degree. It means vectors are perpendicular to each other. That is vector A is perpendicular to vector B. In this case cos 90 degree is equal to what? That is 0. So in that case R can be obtained as using this formula A square plus B square plus 2AB right now plus 2 a b and cos 0 is 0 so cos 90 is 0 so this will be 0 so that will be a square plus b square that is what i told you that using pythagoras theorem you can find the resultant in that case so when two vectors are perpendicular to each other then uh, the resultant can be obtained by using pythagoras theorem right now so this will be the result i hope you got it right now there are third case that uh, when theta is equal to 180 degree in that case cos 180 degree is equal to minus 1 and vector a and b are unlike parallels are unlike parallels parallel vectors parallel vectors right now. in that case what will be that r is equal to the resultant r can be obtained as a square plus b square plus 2 a b into minus 1 because cos 1 it is minus 1. in that case this will be a square plus b square minus 2 a b which is equal to a minus b whole square and out of square root it will be a minus b magnitude of a minus b means bigger minus smaller and so this is what we had already discussed that when vectors are like parallel their resultant is obtained by difference of their magnitude isn't it so difference of their magnitude and here we it is just verified with this simple law so uh, this is what for addition and you can do it r is magnitude of r is given by this is r r means there is no vector sign so that's just magnitude of r so magnitude of r is given by this way so in that case two vectors are unlike parallels like uh, one of them 180 degrees here only if one vector is in this direction this is a and uh, another vector is in this direction right so here the two vectors are like right? 
so this is vector a and this is vector b and angle between them is 180 degree so they are unlike parallel so they are unlike parallel unlike parallel vectors parallel vectors right unlike parallel vectors like this so this is what now uh, we are going to learn about resolutions of vector so how vector can be resolved in a plane because a uh, resolution of vectors a resolution of vectors in a plane in a plane right okay so there is a, a vector say i have a vector like this and i want to resolve this in two perpendicular planes so how to resolve them this is a vector and i want to resolve it so taking keeping this one as an origin this one as origin and draw two perpendicular axis edge if i draw two perpendicular axis edge keeping this is an origin then there will be two lines say two perpendicular axis edge i have drawn here and this one edge by keeping in mind that uh, this is an origin this vector lies at origin you know and uh, here it is so this is a vector <coughs> now i have drawn two mutually perpendicular axis edge the horizontal one is called x axis and the vertical one is called y axis and uh, these two mutually perpendicular axis edge are called rectangular axis edge and cartesian system this one is called origin here now if i draw two perpendicular lines from here only this one is perpendicular say here and draw perpendicular on this then that will be these two perpendicular lines here and uh, if this is a vector r say the notation of this is r notation of this is r say if i draw this perpendicular here right now this is a perpendicular perpendicular here then magnitude of r this angle is theta so by using trigonometry we have sin theta say this is o this is p this one is m so sin theta is equal to what pm upon r right now so therefore pm is equal to r sin theta right pm is equal to r sin theta similarly uh, if i write cos theta then cos theta is what cos theta is om upon r and therefore om is called r cos theta now using the vector symbol uh, we can write here op is equal to om plus mp om plus mp so using this vector by vector addition by vector addition we have op can be written as vector op can be written as om plus mp right now and om is nothing else but uh, these are two called component of op so om and mp are called this is first let me write this is one here om and mp are called component of op and op is what r so here om vector and mp are called are called component of vector component of vector op along along x axis x axis and y axis respectively along x axis and y axis respectively y axis respectively right so om is magnitude 
right now op can be written as vector r right if this point is say p is the point and they have a coordinate if it is in plane then say this is x y coordinate then this one is y and this coordinate is x so om is equal to x om is magnitude of om is equal to x we can write om is magnitude of om is x and therefore om is called <coughs> xi you know vector om is equal to xi why this is xi because i is unit vector similarly m is also written as mp vector is equal to y and j is unit vector along this axis so therefore vector r can be and since p x y is coordinate so r can be written as vector r can be written as xi plus yj so these are x and y are component of vector op and this process is called a resolution of vector so component and the process is called a resolution of vector op along two perpendicular component x axis and y axis if i put x is equal to r cos theta into i plus r sin theta into j right now and this is r so these are called polar polar representation because theta is there so these are also called components but they are in polar form polar form why because there is a theta these are components these are also called component so r cos theta and r sin theta are two components also two components of r components of r vector r in direction of x axis and y axis respectively and y axis respectively right similarly if there is a vector then there is a s in a space then they have also a component along x axis y axis and z axis let us draw one diagram and then i'll discuss there after i'll discuss it this image say this is a vector p right and let me draw this diagram here there are three components this is x axis y axis and z axis diagram is ready and p has been uh, drawn in three rectangular component uh, component of vector op this is o r r has three component rx ry and rz so vector r has three rectangular component three rectangular component rectangular component we are going to discuss here the rectangular component of let me write first the grid line let me write the grid line first rectangular component the topic is resolution of vector of vector in three rectangular component three rectangular component their components components right so this is the topic and i am going to discuss this so here r is a vector we can write here r is a vector let op that is r be any vector any vector and rx ry rz are three rectangular component three rectangular component along x axis y axis and z axis respectively components along x axis y axis and z axis respectively and z axis respectively <coughs> right now respectively so what is that and how it can be resolved so by vector addition 
there are some mechanisms which I like to discuss. We can write here <coughs> by vector addition. This is OK is equal to by triangle law. By triangle law, we can write here by uh, triangle law. Triangle law, we can write this OP is equal to. We can write OP is equal to this vector is equal to this vector OK plus KP. So we can write here OP is equal to vector OP is equal to OK plus KP, right? This is equation first. Now, uh, by parallelogram law, from parallelogram law, from parallelogram law, gram law, we can write here. What is that? Parallelogram OK is equal to OK is equal to what? OK is equal to OP vector plus uh, this is OQ vector. OQ vector, right? So if I put OK here, place of value OK, then OP is equal to OK plus OP plus OQ, right? Which can be further written as OK. Uh, in place of OK, I have written here OT plus OQ plus KP. So this is KP. In place of this OT plus OQ, OQ and uh, OT plus OQ is this, and this is KP. KP. Now KP is nothing else but vector uh, KP, right now. Thing, KP is nothing else but OS, so it can be written as OQ plus OT plus OS, and these are components. So, therefore, vector R can be written as vector R can be written as RX plus RY plus RJ, right now. And this is along x axis, so I, J, and K, right now. So, this is the main two. And that is the resolution of vectors in the rectangular component system. So I hope you got this point. Okay. So hopefully you understood each and everything about this uh, rectangular components in plane or in a space that is in two card component or three component. How to resolve them? These are the called uh, process is called resolution of vectors and uh, um, components are described as some of uh, vector is described as some of their components so this is all about component of vectors now let us discuss direction cosines what is direction cosines direction cosines direction cosine of line so direction cosine direction cosine of a line is the cosine of angles cosine of angles made by line with axis h with axis h that is x axis y axis and z axis it, they are denoted as they are denoted as L and N respectively, respectively, that is made with x axis, y axis, and z axis. If alpha, beta, gamma, if alpha, beta, gamma are angles made by line with x axis y axis and z axis respectively z axis respectively then cos alpha cos beta cos gamma are called direction cosines direction cosines of line right so if I draw this the plane here, say, and uh, this is another one. 
which makes an angle this is y axis this is x axis this is origin and this is z axis if a line makes an angle say so this is a line and this line makes an angle say this is makes alpha with y axis it makes beta and with z axis it makes gamma then cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma are called direction cosines right cos alpha cos beta and cos gamma are called direction cosines and it is denoted as l and m so l is cos alpha m is cos beta and n is cos gamma you know if this point is p that coordinate is x y z and say op is equal to r op is equal to r then their coordinate along x axis will be what c if i draw perpendicular then x coordinate will be the intercept along x axis isn't it and that will be if this will be the intercept along x axis then that will be x isn't it so if this will be x then cos alpha is nothing else cos alpha is nothing else x upon r because this is r x upon r and uh, similarly cos beta is y upon r similarly cos beta is y upon r and cos gamma is equal to z upon r so remember cos alpha cos beta cos gamma is equal to y and what is op vector op vector is r is nothing else but vector op and position vector of op can be written as xi plus yj plus zk you have learned it and therefore modulus of r is nothing else but under root of x square plus y square plus z square and therefore r square is x square plus y square plus z square if you write this cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma then what will happen cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma then that will be nothing else but x square by r square plus y square by r square plus z square by r square that is x square lcm is r square and in numerator this will be x square y square z square and you know this x square y square z square is nothing else but r square so it will be r square by r square and what is that one r square by r square is one and therefore we can write it cos square alpha plus cos square beta cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is equal to one remember this fact this is cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma and that all is equal to 1. Since cos alpha is represented by L, so we can write here L square plus M square plus M square is equal to 1. So therefore L square plus M square plus M square is equal to 1. This can be also written, you know. So you may remember either any one of them, right? Now? Any one of them cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is also 1 or l square plus m square plus m square is equal to 1. If you convert them in sine then it will be sine square alpha plus sine square beta plus sine square gamma is equal to 2. Right now? So this is also one of the important one. You can use this one also. Right now? Now let us say it's time to do some questions. Uh, first questions, the very simple questions I am going to take on it. Find the unit vector, unit vector along 3i, uh, 3i plus 4j, right now, plus 6k right like this so you need vector along this if h as we had discussed earlier that unit vector along any vector a 
we know what unit vector along vector a along vector any vector a is nothing else but a upon magnitude of vector a. So here we will first find the magnitude of vectors. So unit vector along this is therefore unit vector along first we will find the magnitude and magnitude of this edge say this is r let this vector name is r along this edge r upon magnitude of r r edge 3 i plus 4 j plus 6 k divided by modulus of 3 i plus 4 j plus 6 k that is magnitude modulus means magnitude and what will be that that will be under root 3 a square plus 4 a square plus 6 a square can i write like this directly okay let me write in this direction only so, let me write like in this direction only. so that will be under root of what under root 3 a square that is 9 16 plus 36 25 plus 36 is 61 so 3 by root 61 i plus 4 by root 61 j plus 6 by root 61 k and that is the unit vector along vector this so wherever you have to find the unit vector along any of the vector which is given you need to divide by their magnitude only I hope you got this point. So this is a simple question just for illustration. And uh, next illustration uh, for uh, the remaining concept will be discussed after the break. So till then, God bless. Keep watching.